Hi, I'm Ryan Williams, writer, illustrator, and today I'm going to take you on a tour under the covers for my story, The Murders in the Readmore Library. Let's take a look. Okay, here we are in Blender, which is a 3D modeling software that I use to create the illustration for this cover. In Blender's object mode, we see that the image that looks flat is actually a 3D layout with depth to it that isn't immediately apparent. I use the outliner to organize the parts of the book cover. So I have collections for things like the cat and the book and the back panels, and I can change how those are displayed, uh, whether they're enabled or not. The first collection that we'll look at are the background panels. These are laid out three of them, uh, one in front of the other, to create the red, white, and black areas of the cover. And if we show the material preview mode, you can see the textures of those panels. Let's look at the red panel now. And if we open up this side panel, we can take a look at the shader that gives the panel its texture. So it's a simple shader with a Voronoi texture uh, that's fed into a, a bump to give the texture uh, that height which we can adjust there and it's set to a red color and that's all there is really to that texture and so we zoom out we can see how that looks. And we look from the side, we see the layout of the panels. And we take a look at the black panel, open up the shader editor, and you can see it's a simple shader. And the white panel is an emission shader. Let's take a look at the book now. This is a simple object. It is <coughs> made of just planes with a line art modifier and a shader to give it the gray text lines effect. C. Auguste Dupin is named after Poe's famous detective and he is the central character in this story. So we look at how he's modeled here in solid view, you can see he's really a simple model. Just a couple low poly shapes for the head and body and ears and a tail. And then on that, is a particle system. You can take a look at the settings here and scroll through those which produces the final rendered uh, fur for Dupin. If we look at the shader for the cat again we just have a very simple black shader and we can see the collection there with the character. Let's take a look at the lights. We'll turn on extras so we can see them. And we've got several lights in this scene, mostly these large area lights. Let's open this up and so we can select them. And you can see here with this light, um, not super strong light, just wide, Casting a lot of illumination and the same thing from the other side And then up above we have a third light That's casting light down on them. And so these lights really illuminate the scene and then we have a couple point lights that are there to help turn Dupin into a silhouette so we've got those right in front of Dupin. And now we'll take a look at the camera. Let's turn this back on. And here we are, the camera looking at the scene. So we go into camera view and you can see it's showing just the scene there. And turn the extras back off. And let's go to the 
material mode. We can see what that looks like. And next, let's take a look at the text for this book cover. So text is one of the parts that really uh, sells the book cover. And we've got a uh, number collection for the title and other elements. And each of these, if we rotate here and take a look, oh, we got to get rid of that. I didn't end up using that in the final book cover. I was thinking about doing a shadow catcher. So these were created from a text object uh, and they're still text objects. They're just have a simple material on them. And it's just an emission shader. If we look at this, you can see they're, they're not actually in the same plane. So they've moved them backwards or forwards uh, as well to adjust the size of the text when seen through the camera. It all lines up with the cover of the book. So just go back real quick to the book here and looking at the line art uh, settings for that. I've got a line art modifier set up to do that outline for the book, for the edges of the pages and creates that and see the, the line art uh, stroke there. And if we go into rendered view, see this is pretty much the book cover. It uh, lays everything out there in the orthographic view. And if we look at the render settings, you can see the number of samples and the other render settings, nothing um, very dramatic here. It's just simple cycles render with the automatic denoise turned on. And that uh, renders out the final image from this 3D view that we have of the book cover and turns it into just the image for the book cover. So next we're gonna pop out of Blender and go over to Affinity uh, to see the final layout of the book cover in Affinity Photo. We've got the image created in Blender. If we hide that, we can see the template there uh, just for a paperback book and then we've got the back cover which has back cover image um, and then text objects and the barcode copied from the template onto its own layer and the various text objects laid out for the description uh, the publisher information and you can see each of those is just laid out in this group as its own object. And that's pretty much the whole thing. Like that's the paperback book cover. This is then exported out uh, as a PDF to upload and create the book. The back panel there is the same image as the front cover, just without all the other objects. It's just the panels rendered and then flipped. On top of the hill, above the green swath of lawn, where C. Auguste Dupin liked to nap in the sun and watch the humans walk past, 
sprawled the Read More Library. If you'd like to read this story, the link is down in the description, along with other links that can help this channel. I plan to have other titles up showing full process videos and other content, so look for that soon. If you've made it this far, I hope you uh, click the like and subscribe button so that you are notified when the new content drops. Thank you. Bye-bye.